What is going on, Trash Talkers? We are back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're going to give you our power rankings heading into week five in the NFL. All that and much more coming your way right now. All right, before we get into today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video as it will help us out tremendously. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video. All right, Nick, week four is in the books. Week five is on the horizon, and we have our power rankings to get to. So starting off with the first eight, 25 through 32, Nick, who do we have here? Looking at the first eight teams, I want to take a look at number 30, the Seattle Seahawks. Now the Seattle Seahawks coming off of a massive victory over the Detroit Lions, having one of the highest scoring games in NFL history. Geno Smith looked incredible. But when I looked at this game, I think it's just a lot of smoke and mirrors. I don't think that the Seattle Seahawks are truly that good. When you look at the two games they've won this year, you look at week one up against the Denver Broncos, Look how the Denver Broncos have done so far this year. Terribly. You look at how the Detroit Lions are doing. They're okay, but they are down their two best players in Amon St. Brown and DeAndre Swift. We already know that Lions defense is absolutely abysmal, so you knew Seattle was going to be able to move the ball. But I think that they did a really good job. I think that they have pieces that they could work with. I'm just not sure that they will be able to sustain this in any of their future matchups. I don't see them with much of any upside moving forward and I don't expect Geno Smith to stay on this trajectory of being one of the top passing quarterbacks in the NFL to me this is going to come to an abrupt end very soon and that's why we see them here at 30 but then I want to take a look at 28 the Atlanta Falcons a team that has been really surprising they are two and two like the Seattle Seahawks but their two losses have been one score games and they have really done a good job of being very competitive they're coming off of back-to-back -back victories, and although Marcus Mariota hasn't looked that great at times, and Cordero Patterson just went down for the next four weeks, this is a really good team with a lot of good weapons to work with. Drake London has burst onto the scene early. Kyle Pitts looks fantastic. If they can keep this offense going in the wake of Cordero Patterson's injury, I could really see the Atlanta Falcons pushing this division and making the Buccaneers really compete because the Atlanta Falcons are proving that they have what it takes to be that gritty team like the Detroit Lions to push teams to the end of the fourth quarter and make them earn each and every victory. So I like what the Atlanta Falcons are doing. I think they are undervalued right now and that they are going to surprise a lot of teams moving forward. Talking about teams pushing to the very end, well, that brings me to team number 20. We have the New England Patriots here, and while they did lose to the Green Bay Packers, you have to admire the, the grit and the toughness that this team showed, and while I'm not one for moral victories, you have to take a look at the, what the Patriots did. Starting Brian Hoyer, him getting knocked out his second series in, and then having Bailey Zappi, the rookie fourth-round quarterback from Western Kentucky, coming in against Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau Field it doesn't get much more vaunted than that and Bailey Zappi actually did a really good job this defense kept the Patriots in the game the entire way did not let Aaron Rodgers beat them over the top they were keeping everything in front of them Aaron Rodgers only second pick six at Lambeau Field in his entire career the Patriots were able to turn the ball over a few times and I think that they are one of the strongest defenses in the league now it's time for Mac Jones to get healthy and they could be on the rise very quickly Taking a look down the line, though, we have the Las Vegas Raiders here at 17, and some of you may say, well, they just got their first win. Why are they so far up? The fact remains that this is a team that can score with the best of them, and now that Josh McDaniels is starting to get his rhythm in Las Vegas, they're starting to see some momentum. I believe that Josh Jacobs is going to be a focal point of this offense. We already know what Darren Waller can do. Hunter Renfro will be coming back from injury fairly soon. This is an offense that is only getting better with time, and they're going to be able to score a ton of points when it comes toward the end of the season. The defensive side of the ball is a bit of a struggle, and that's why they still remain this low on the list. If they can figure out that this defense they should be up toward the top which is where i expected them to be preseason 
Now moving over to teams nine through 16, I wanna take a look at team number 13, the New York Giants. Now they have been very surprising this year, sitting at three and one currently. The Giants have been able to do a lot more on the offensive side of the ball than in years past. And all thanks to Brian Dayball. I mean, this guy is an absolute genius when it comes to offensive play. When it comes to offensive play calling, he was able to come up with plays that got incredible yardage with zero quarterbacks in the game in week four. This guy is really putting Saquon Barkley and some of the other offensive weapons in great opportunities to make plays. And we've seen Saquon be that number one running back in the NFL once again, another 140 plus yards in this matchup. He really looks like himself, like that top five pick that came out of school just a few years ago. Saquon Barkley is a big reason why this offense is moving, but Daniel Jones is also doing his part. And this defense is looking pretty good for having not too many big names with them right now. Overall, the New York Giants are a very undervalued team performing way above expectations, and I see them continuing this trend. I expect them to be one of the Cinderella stories moving forward through the season. But a team that I think is putting up a little bit better of a show than they will through the rest of the season the Los Angeles Chargers because we've seen the Los Angeles Chargers struggle up against divisional opponent Kansas City Chiefs. We saw them take on the Houston Texans in week four and come away with a 10 point victory. But there was a point in time where that was a three point game and the Houston Texans had a shot to win. The Los Angeles Chargers have what it takes to put up points on offense, but that defense is still looking very, very bad. They are not able to stop a porous offense like the Houston Texans from putting up 20 plus points. I don't know how the Los Angeles Chargers are going to be able to compete with the teams in their conference and even in their division with the Chiefs and the Raiders. To me, the Chargers are not looking good for the future, and I really don't expect them to continue with any sort of success. I am very weary of where the Los Angeles Chargers are if they don't flip something on both sides of the ball. Yeah, a team that has also struggled on both sides of the ball this season, our number seven team, and that being the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, taking a look at where the Buccaneers have been. They are sitting at two and two, coming off of back-to-back -back losses. First to the Green Bay Packers, only putting up 12 points in that game, and then losing in that absolute shellacking that they got by the Kansas City Chiefs. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense was actually able to move the ball and score some points with regularity over the weekend, but the fact remains that the defense could not stop a nosebleed. Travis Kelsey was absolutely phenomenal against this team. They had no answer for him, and then we saw some of the receivers really getting into the mix. We saw Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and Isaac Pacheco really getting after it. This is a defense that really needs to hone in, buckle down, and get things going because that is Todd Bowles' bread and butter. That's the whole reason he's the head coach to be begin with if this defense can't figure it out it might be tom brady's swan song in the regular season but a team that has higher aspirations than that a team that is super bowl bound we're looking at our number one team yet again the philadelphia eagles reigning supreme here they are one of the best teams in the nfl if not the best team in our estimation clearly they are number one they have the offensive firepower to match any team in the nfl defensively speaking we saw that their recent acquisition of James Bradbury get an interception really come to light and show why he was such a prominent figure in free agency for them to grab on top of that we know what Darius Slay has been able to do all season long the defensive line looks phenomenal they are controlling the line of scrimmage this is a team that has no weaknesses every level they have somebody who can really hurt you defense offense special teams they have it all figured out and nick sirianni has to be feeling good about where this team is absolutely sirianni's got to be feeling good and if i'm any other team in the nfl i'm terrified because both sides of the ball are just absolutely stellar and i don't see this team getting any worse so the nfl is now on notice the NFL is definitely on notice, and we put you guys on notice, too, all offseason long, talked about the Philadelphia Eagles. We loved what we saw with the draft and some free agent pickups. Now they are showing it. It is not just on paper. They are putting it to the test, and they are standing the test of time. But I want to hear from you guys. Let us know in the comments down below which teams do we have too high and which teams do we have too low. Let us know in the comments down below. All right, well, that's going to be all for now. Thank you all for watching. 
be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.